which is on the up, which is probably illegal, definitely immoral, and well out of order. The difference between MI6 and the Foreign Office, because the Foreign Office, they also work overseas trying to get uh, deals for, the, for British firms, helping British firms find their feet in a foreign country, helping British firms make contacts. That's the job of the Foreign Office, commercial department. What MI6 does, they, they, they go in and they've got, they've got um, to do more or less the same job. They're, what they can do, which the Foreign Office can't, is MI6 can pay bribes. And that's basically the difference. MI6 can go in and say, look, come on, we'll have a little meeting on the side. And if you tell us a little bit more than you told the Foreign Office, we'll give you a little bit of money. So that's basically what MI6's job is. It's basically um, uh, an organ a part of the, the Foreign Office which, is allowed, which can pay bribes. Mm. But the, I find this incredible because Britain's just signed up to the OECD Convention mm. on Bribery and Corruption. Mm. You know, we're supposed to be outlawing bribery and corruption, yeah, and yet well, we're actually sanctioning it. Yes, well, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what uh, MI6 exists by bribing people. I mean, they, they, they phrase it around in a different word. They don't actually say it's bribing. It's a, they, they'll phrase it around in a completely different way, but payments to informers is what is their bread and butter. I mean, for example, a bank would have a, have a huge advantage if they knew that Germany was going to move its interest rates next week, or that it would cause, give them a big advantage. Well, you're actually responsible for, for playing a carder. Mm which was the, the British MI6 mole mm. within the Bundesbank. Mm. What, was, what was happening there? What the MI6 officer's job there was to, was to pay a German citizen an allied, from an allied country uh, uh, to break the law of his own country. And so you, there you have an official from Britain in Germany taking taxpayers' money to pay bribes to a German official to break the German law. And in the European Union, you. You know, we, whatever people might think about the European Union, we've signed up to it. We have to obey the laws of it, and it's totally illegal under any under under European laws to do that. You mentioned British Airways mm. earlier on. British Airways have, have got a link with MI6. Mm. I believe you mentioned that the BAE staff are actively recruited mm. by MI6. Yeah, well, well, you know, that could, they can be very useful. Um, they, they get access airside in airports, so they, they know the way around airports, and they're, they're, they're useful people for MI6, you know. So, so they can just st see you through, take you through? Yeah, and captains uh, as well, uh, um, you know, do odd jobs for, for MI6 as well. Like? Well, for example, diplomatic bags. Uh, you know, normally you have, um, uh, well, God, I can't remember what they're called now, HM messenger services, people who, who fly around the world in business class carrying the diplomatic bag mm -hmm. and they carry it as hand luggage. And uh, sometimes if, there's, if they need to get something back urgently and there isn't one of these Queen's messengers about, they, 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 so they sort of give it to the captain and he carries it off. And usually if, if, if it is something that urgent, it's because MI6 have got something in there. And, you know, he can be sitting there carrying, carrying a gun or carrying all sorts of things, you know, but un, you, unwittingly, but uh, they never, you know, you can have all sorts of things in the diplomatic bag. You mentioned that MI6 operatives were trained well, or SES, some of them, SES, well, yeah. in, in high altitude parachute drops. Would BA involved? Well, potentially, if they wanted, they'd say, fly over a sensitive country. They could fly in in the um, airline aircraft lanes. These are very, very high altitude lanes which the, the aircraft fly down, and they would they would have to uh, uh, adopt the call sign of a regular passenger jet to. You know, not, not, not avoid suspicion from the air traffic controls of a potential country. So yes, they would then in that case they would adopt the, the call sign of a British Airways jet that was that flew regularly over that that uh, route. There can be genuine reasons for for secrecy, um, uh, and one has to respect that. But there needs to be much better measures put in to prevent the government and protect, pre prevent the intelligence services from using the secrecy laws merely to cover up their mistakes. British Airways aren't aware if any of their current or former staff work for MI6. They told us they didn't know whether the military have adopted their call signs, but they wouldn't give permission if asked. They, along with other national carriers, do carry diplomatic bags on their aircraft. Anyone who's making a program about official secrecy really should talk to a chap in the MOD behind me. And the chap's name is Rear Admiral Nick Wilkinson. He is the chairman of the Defence Advisory Committee. And the D Notice Committee, as it's called, what it does is it advises the media on what should and shouldn't be included in the press, which may or may not threaten national security. And it's all sort of done on a nudge and a wink kind of thing. It's the first time that the chair of the Defence Advisory Committee has actually agreed to be interviewed on telly, so we're quite excited. What does the Dean Notice Committee do? Uh, basically, it's a, a committee of um, civil servants and journalists who get together twice a year to talk informally about um, mutual um, concerns about national security. It's peculiarly British and it, and it grew up, as these things often do, um, a long time ago. 
in um, 1912, in fact, and this informal committee, which has no statutory basis whatsoever, has remained in existence ever since. It's evolved, but basically it's the same idea. Where would you want to see the Official Secrets Act going? Um, that I, I'm afraid I just can't comment on because I know too much on the official side about what is going on and um, I, would be, I would be breaching what I have in confidence on that side. I would certainly hope to see it looked at. Um, it's, it's an old act, 1989, and all acts need dusting off uh, from time to time. It was last updated when the Cold War was still you know, just kind of tailing off and things have moved on and uh, as I say all old acts need another look. One of the things that strikes me as odd here is that there are thousands of sites mm. um, on the UK that are disguised or mm. have misinformation. You'll often mm. see sites with works mm. written across them or things like that which mm. are in fact military installations. Mm. On this Ordnance Survey map, if I can just pass you that there. I need to find my glasses to look at uh, it. That's OK. <laughs> uh, Burfield appears, as you can see, and it's actually got the buildings. The, there's a site drawing there. Mm. Now, this one here in Burfield, you can see it's not there, this recent edition of the OS. It has been taken off by, um, we presume, by the, by the MOD. If you rang me up with a query, I would investigate whether there was still some reason why some information you wanted to publish could not be published. That is what I'm here for. Yeah. If, you, if you rang me up and asked, can we publish it, yeah. I would investigate, and I might find there was a reason, I might not. If there wasn't, I would say, as far as I'm concerned, go ahead and publish. OK, well, we'd, we'd like to leave that with you, if that's OK, okay if you could Certainly, find yes, out. Yeah. Hmm. Fortunately, there are a few laws and loopholes that help make Britain a tad more accountable, and I'll be telling you about them later on. It's the Freedom of Information Act, though, that's supposed to help us get access to information. And I'll be showing how MI5 colluded with the American security forces to monitor requests for information made by the relatives of the Lockerbie bombing. First, though, we wanted to talk to someone who'd actually had experience of MI5 withholding information. We live in an overly secretive country. Yes, Would that be something that you generally go along with? Absolutely. I mean, in this country, information is secret unless someone decides it's open. Um, whereas in most countries, information is open unless someone decides it's secret. It's a fundamental difference. And the government's freedom of information legislation is, quite frankly, helpless. Uh, if you look at the Labour's commitments in opposition, they were substantial to freedom of information. And ever since 1997, they've been watered down. David Clark, who was a minister responsible in 1997 for introducing legislation of this nature, produced a very good white paper. He must be the first cabinet minister in the history to be sacked for trying to implement his party's manifesto policies. I was with Norman Baker, the Lib Dem mm. MP, the other day, and um, he was after his file. Mm. Um, he's a member of parliament, mm. you know, he's not a terrorist, he's never been involved mm. in any violent activities at mm. all. Um, and he won his case that 